Hello guys, recently Matt Stauffer with Titan released Built with Laravel project. Here's the website itself and he also tweeted about it with more than 200 people liking it. And also there is Laravel news article about it by Matt himself so you can read the backstory and I will link all of those in the description below. But also they released that project as open source on GitHub and this is a Laravel code that we can read, analyze, and learn from. And this is a simple enough project, so we don't have to dive really deep. It's just a list of websites or companies, organizations with filter of technology, for example, and you can go inside and take a look at a bit more information, but nothing really fancy. Also, there's a suggestion form, so you can suggest more projects built with Laravel. So I decided to dive into the code and shoot a few videos here on YouTube, analyzing the decisions by Titan Company and Matt himself, kind of like a code review, but not with the goal to criticize them in any way. It's just my personal biased opinion on what is good in their code. So something we can learn from, or something that I could maybe improve if I were in that company. So in this video, the first topic will be routes and controllers. Then the next video will be about blade component structure for that page. And then also I'm planning to shoot a third video about page caching based on built with Laravel and a few other projects. So if you want to get all of those, subscribe to the channel. Now let's dive into the code and I have installed that project locally. Here, as you can see, project3.test, which is the same built with Laravel with almost the same websites, which are part of database seeders on GitHub here. So it's really easy to install. There's no installation instructions because, and kind of a disclaimer or notice, this website, this code was never really meant by Titan to be published as a lesson to anyone or for anyone to install. That's why there's no installation instructions. They're just open sourcing it kind of as a good vibe to the community if someone wants to take a look at that. But you can actually feel that the code isn't polished in some places. So some routes exist, but don't really actually work properly. It's more like an internal quick project open sourced on GitHub. And in this video, we're looking at routes and controllers. And I will just comment what I noticed here. So first thing I've noticed is the same controller, organization controller, used twice with different route structure. Why? At first, I thought it should be grouped. Then my second thought would be, let's close the sidebar. So here we have only one method route resource, but with only method show with the middleware. So why route resource for one method? Isn't it kind of an overkill? And I thought, what if we do something like this instead? So route get organizations and then organization as a parameter. And then we don't need the show here and that would work, right? And of course we need to specify the method then organization controller class show like this. But look what happens when I refresh the home page. I refresh and there will be an error route organizations show not defined. So somewhere in the blade, there's a route link which uses route name. And this is the point number one. With route resource, it uses the convention of naming automatically by Laravel without you providing the name of, for example, organizations show like this. So then it kind of made sense to me why they used route resource for just one method. Of course, as usual in Laravel, it's a personal preference and both ways can work, but this is a very good example of personal preference based on their reasons. So if you want to stick to default naming by route resource, then that may be your personal choice. Or do you want to provide name manually? Then you could use route get instead. And now for refresh, there's no error because that route with the name exists because I added that manually. Then the second part of the same controller route is organization controller index, which handles the home page, handles the list of organizations. But also it acts kind of like a fallback for technology. So if you click any of those links above, like a filter like Inertia, React, or Vue.js, the link URL is changing, but this is the same route here. And they intentionally put that separately after all of those routes below, because it acts like a fallback back after all the routes. So if it's not an organization, if it's not a suggestion route, if it's not any other route that will be added in the future, anything that comes after slash means a technology. But of course with a validation, so if you put anything here, it would show 404 not found. 
but that validation comes from controller itself. So let's take a look at the controller now. Validation is happening under the hood by route model binding. So technology is a parameter. This is a model of technology. And then there's get route key name slug. So it is searching by technology slug automatically. So this slug doesn't exist. That's why it throws 404 error page. Personally, maybe I would prefer a separate route like technologies slash and then slug instead of using the home page. But this is also a debatable and personal preference decision. They wanted to incorporate the same technology filter within the home page with optional parameter. Cool. Now let's take a look at the controller again, organization controller. And here I want to emphasize a few things. First, private methods. I've seen this used in other projects by Titan and by Matt personally. So main method of the controller, whether it's index or something else, or it may be invocable controller. And then some parameters are collected with private methods within the same controller. So method for gathering organizations by technology and method for gathering all the technologies for the filter on top in general. And let's see what's inside those methods. So first technologies is more simple one. So we have a query of technology where has organizations. This is important. This is a smart way to show only technologies that have at least one organizations in the database. So then the admin may add more technologies, but until they have at least one organization in the database, they wouldn't be shown on the homepage. And then it's also cached for one hour with the key of active organizations. Probably there is a typo here. I would probably name that active technologies, but that's a small detail. Then another method organizations, similar thing, eloquent query cached with another key. In this case, key contains technology slug as a parameter, also cached for an hour. And then we query the organizations with sites. So in this case, the structure of the database is organization like Apple, for example, may have multiple sites using Laravel. So that's why it's organization and site separately. Also, I like the solution of featured ad naming of the column here in the same fashion as created ad. It totally means right away that underscore ad is a prefix for timestamp column. And also we may take a look at another controller, which is suggestion controller. This one is pretty simple. Just create form with technologies and then store the data. They don't even use any form request or anything like that because it's a very simple controller. And again, it's debatable. Again, it's a personal preference whether to use form request or validate in the controller. Both can work. I see both in actions in various projects. So it's a personal preference and then creating the model and sending the email or Slack notification, in fact, to probably Matt himself or other people involved in the project, but also with a check of only that happening on production or testing server. So yeah, these are the routes and controllers in this project. What do you think? Anything that you would comment differently, or maybe you would change something? Let's discuss in the comments below. And in the next video, I will talk about view blade structure of this project because it's pretty interesting and using components for layout. So for example, if we go to organizations index, you can see X public layout, X orgs list, and some other X stuff, which is an interesting example of blade components. So subscribe to the channel to not miss that video and see you guys in other videos.